two episode, first episode, the first episode. Also, and it's good. It's good. And guess what? We're interviewing Les Lazarus, the voice of the Blades. Here's the voice of the Blades, Les Lazarus. Second verse, try hard local heroes for it to not be the same as the first. Good evening and welcome to Saskatoon Blades Hockey on 92.9 The Bull. I'm Les Lazarus at the Brand Center in Regina for tonight's Western Hockey Day game between the Blades and the Pats. Hi, I'm, it's the Massey Twins. I'm here with Les Lazarus, the voice of the Blades. And today we're going to ask him some questions. All right. And I'll start it off. Okay. Who is your favorite hockey team? NHL, Winnipeg Jets. I grew up in Winnipeg, so I like the Jets. Fair. I like the Blades. How long have you been I, doing play-by-play? I, play. I have been doing play-by-play play off and on for 37 years. I've been in radio since October of 1980, and pretty much everywhere I've been in 37 years I've done play-by-play. Play. But I've done the Blades exclusively since 1994, so this is my 24th season. Wow. That's a lot, eh? What's your most memorable Game. Wow, most memorable game. I would say would probably be in the Memorial Cup in 2013 in Saskatoon. The Blades defeated the eventual champion, uh, Halifax Mooseheads, by a score of 5-2. to two. Uh, was probably the highlight of that tournament and that whole season for the Blades. Whoa. They weren't a lot of highlights that year, but that one was really one of them. Whoa. Yeah. How long have you... What did, how, who is the most memorable player you've seen on Playboy Play? Ooh, there's a lot of them. Uh, Braden Holtby would come to mind. He's, of course, a goaltender for the Washington Capitals, played for the Blades, and probably the greatest Blades goaltender of all time, arguably. Uh, some other great players, though, that have come through the Western Hockey League, not necessarily playing for the Blades, like Jerome McGinley, who's just uh, not trying to decide whether he's retiring or whether he's going to play for Canada at the Olympics in South Korea. But those two come to mind right away. What's your, what is your favorite city to visit? Ooh, his favorite city to visit. I like going to the United States. We go on a U.S. road trip every two years, and probably either Spokane or Portland are my two favorite cities in the U.S. Mine is actually in Minnesota. You like Minnesota, eh? Yeah, That's and pretty Minot. cool. And Minot. Minot the magic really city good. of Minot. <laughs> what is your favorite city to visit for games? Okay, favorite city to visit for games, actually it's probably Prince Albert because it's the closest to Saskatoon and there's a little bit of a rivalry there so there's a lot of atmosphere and interest amongst the fans on both sides. That kind of sounds cool. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like Regina and Moose Jaw. They yeah. hate each other. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. What is your favorite Blades jersey? The one they're wearing now what they call the Pac-Man. It's actually a skate blade that's kind of inside of a circle. Uh, that's, it's the best one that, uh, that they've had. It, it had the most history, the most success back in the 1980s and early 1990s, and I'm glad that they're back to it now. Well, the it's my turn. Yeah. Really cool. My turn again. Oh. What is your favorite jersey in WHL? Past or present? Past or present. I would say it would be the Portland Winterhawks jersey, that classic, it, it, it's the exact same jersey as the Chicago Blackhawks of the National Hockey League. It is a classic, old style logo and look, uh, just very clean looking. The red with the black and the white, uh, it's, it's my favorite. How did you start your career with the play-by-play? Okay, I originally was going to be a newspaper writer and I was really enjoying the newspaper writing until my newspaper in Winnipeg folded. They ceased to exist. All of a sudden there was nothing. And that was in August of 1980 and a nice lady who worked for the competing newspaper said to me, you've got a good voice, why don't you get into radio? So I got into radio that year in October of 1980, about 37 years ago now, and uh, started in Brandon and did play-by-play -play as part of my radio responsibilities. Who were your idols growing up? Broadcast idols or hockey idols? Uh, broadcast, maybe idols. broadcast idols. Broadcast idols, I would say, would be the late Ken Nicholson, who was the play-by-play -play voice of the Winnipeg Jets in the old World Hockey Association back in the 1970s. Uh, he was the guy that I that I, and I even still pattern a little bit of myself after him today. There's a couple of things that he used to say that I still do say nowadays. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool uh, having Ken Nicholson as a broadcast idol. My mentor would be my boss in Winnipeg, uh, Bob Irving, who still does the play-by-play -play of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers of the CFL. What game do you wish you could have called? I would have loved to have called 
the eighth and final game of the 1972 Summit Series between what was then known as the Soviet Union and Canada, which Canada won in Moscow, winning the, tur winning the series four games to three with one game tied. That would have been a phenomenal uh, opportunity to have called that. The good news was is that we all got to watch the great Foster Hewitt, the, the pioneer of hockey broadcasting, actually call that game, and that was a lot of fun. Do you get to eat food or drinks you visit? Darn toot, and I do. In fact, there's probably going to be some pizza over in the back for me here in a little bit once I'm done with you guys. So I look forward to that. Uh, and some places are really good. Prince Albert makes the best rink burger in the Western Hockey League, as far as I'm concerned, at the Art Hauser Center. Well, I should go try that. Yes, you should. I'm looking forward What's your to favorite that? food? Yeah. You know, actually, you know what's also good? Here in this building, taco in a bag. You can't go wrong with taco in a bag. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? My favorite food is steak. I love a good, juicy steak with all the trimmings. Uh, so, Brianna, we put a request here for viewers yes. to ask. And Dave M asked, does Troy Ballhofer make the all-time play team? If we're talking about just a lineup on the ice, goaltender, two defensemen, and three forwards, Probably not, but if we're talking about a full 20-man team of Blades, he might sneak in there. He had a pretty good career back in the 1980s with the Blades. Um, Bryce T. asks, was Cam Moon a better goalie or play-by-play -play man? Now, Bryce T. is actually Bryce Toma, who is an assistant coach with yep. the Saskatoon Blades. So I think he was trying to trip me up on this one a little bit. We had a few chuckles about the fact that he asked this question. Cam Moon himself would tell you that he's a better play-by-play -play man than he is a goaltender. Although he was pretty proud of his goaltending career, having played in the, the Western Hockey League with the Blades of all teams back yeah. in the late 1980s. I'm pretty proud of my other friend, which is a goalie. Yeah. Peyton Ackerman. Very good. Yeah. Uh, what do you do for one of your hobbies when you're on the bus trips? I'm usually sitting on my phone and playing solitaire. Solitaire? Yeah. Wow. Boom. There it comes. Bam. So I was, play I was playing it just before we got here. I like oh. playing solitaire. I also like keeping up with what's going on with uh, in my work. So I do a lot of work, radio station work, while I'm on the bus. And my dad does a lot of work on trips. Yeah. Well, and that's what that's what road trips are. They are they aren't all fun and games as much as we'd like to believe they are. Like family trips. There you go. And road trips. Yes. How many kilometers do you travel in a season? Oh my goodness, a math question. You, you expect me to do math? I honestly don't know how many it is. I know that there's 72 games, 36 of them are on the road, and we play, uh, out of the 22 teams, we play 17 of those teams on the road. So I, it's, a, it's probably about 20, 25,000 kilometers in a year, I would think. Uh, that's a guess. That's a lot, eh? Yeah. yeah, I can't even do that, and I'm in grade four, which is <laughs> not surprising. Yeah, well, you're obviously pretty smart. You're able to do this. I'm impressed you guys are able to do this sort of a thing. A YouTube channel for me? Are you kidding? I would blow that to smithereens, probably. Cat or dog? Which one do you prefer? You know what? I've got both now. We, we uh, adopted a puppy back in the summertime, so we have a dog. Go along with a 17-year-old cat. That poor cat is being traumatized by the dog, but the dog's great, except at 4.30 in the morning. Except at 4.30 in the morning when she wants me to come and wake her up, or, t or she wakes me up and asks me to take her outside. That is always what happens to my mom there, and my dad. There you go. And See, guess what, they, how much cats we have? Three. Three. Three cats. Three cats. Yeah. Wow. Three cats. Holy smokes. And no, we used to have a dog, but my mom was allergic, and Oops. my our cats were really... Annoyed, I bet. I bet. Well, yeah, but we've got a cat and a dog now, so I, I, so I really have no preference now. What do you do in the off season? In the off season, I still have work to do at the radio station. I have six weeks of holidays. I like to golf. I like to travel. I'll go visit some family back in Manitoba uh, occasionally, but otherwise, it's it's golf and uh, just hang out with my wife because she's basically a hockey widow. When I'm gone like this in the course of a hockey season, that's time away from her. So I try and spend as much time in the summertime with her as I possibly can. Have you had any other jobs in this job? Oh yeah, when I was a kid, I did all kinds of things. My first job, I worked at a McDonald's. 
like those. Yes, That's I worked pretty... at a McDonald's. I was a short order cook when I was 16 years old. Six. See? Okay, maybe when I'm yep. 16, I could be a... You McDonald's sure could. Cook. You certainly could. Absolutely. Maybe I could. I have a question about <laughs> that. Okay. What's your, what was your favorite thing cooking? My favorite thing cooking was what I cooked for myself because back in those days, the employees could make anything they wanted for themselves. So I made the quarter double mac. It was the Big Mac bun with two quarter pounder patties instead of the regular little wee ones that they get yeah. inside the Big Mac. Yeah, those aren't very big. The quarter pound patties, two of them inside the Big Mac bun with all the Big Mac sauce and lettuce and all the rest of that good stuff. That was outstanding they eating. They should sell that. They, they should. should. They should. They should. But yeah, they don't. That's great. Oh well. <laughs> I'd have to get. I'd have to ask for royalties if that were the case. Um, yeah. How did you become the voice of the blades? I uh, knew that there was going to be a change in the way the radio situation was in Saskatoon in 1994. I approached a friend of mine who used to work with me in Winnipeg. He was working at the station in Saskatoon. I applied, and the general manager at the time said, "Yes, we need an experienced uh, professional play-by-play -play guy to do this," and so. You're it. So I've been doing it now, like I say, I'm into my 24th season. Has anyone ever interrupted the broadcast? Yes, lots of times. People come in and I, I probably should keep the door locked, but I don't mind people coming in because I'm, I'm a pretty personable guy. I like I like to be friendly. I, I like to see people. So it, it's I never go and say, no, you shouldn't be in here sort of a thing. But people come in all the time and I have to you know, get distracted from what's going on on the ice and say hi to somebody that they come in, so. Actually, they're, they're interrupting nothing. They're interrupting, well, what about those guys that took the microphone? Yeah, they, they yeah. Blast and I don't up. even care a no? thing about that. There you go. <laughs> what's the funniest thing you've seen ever seen at a game? Funniest thing I've ever seen at a game. Well, I think the best things that have ever happened are, are some of the between periods things that happen. Uh, the first time I saw the, um, uh, what do they call them, the sumo wrestler suits? Yeah. Sumo people, wrestler. people in sumo wrestler suits. So That's there was point. a, so they brought three or four of them out onto the ice and they were battling and they knocked one down and the one guy jumped on them and the mascot came and jumped on top of them both and I thought that was hilarious. That was the best. That is super funny. It is super funny. Do you have funny. a favorite YouTuber? You guys, because I'd never met YouTubers before until I met you. So you are my favorites officially, and now I'm going to subscribe to the YouTube channel and start watching you guys yeah. a lot more regularly. Thanks. Actually, you're welcome. Um, you're gonna be in our second season, so. Perfect. I'm excited about that. Thank you for asking well, me. You get the last one. Who has been your favorite guest on air? My favorite guest on air. You know what? Back in Winnipeg, when I was helping out with NHL, uh, we had Marc Messier on. And Marc Messier, of course, is a great Edmonton order, many times Stanley Cup champion. And so I had the opportunity to interview and talk with Marc Messier several times on the radio, and I thought that he was the most interesting person I ever had a chance to talk to. Um, we have this person at our school called Pyatt Messier. Mm -hmm. Could be a relative. Never know. You never know. You just never know. Thanks for watching.